Riley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for September 2023. So on September 14th, we are going to have our new moon taking place in Virgo energy. So we have a lot to unpack. First of all, it's taking place at 21 degrees, which is in the latter part of the Zodiac wheel, which means that again, this is about wrapping things up. This is about endings. This is about closures. And even though a new moon is about setting intentions and really starting something new and initiating a new cycle, the only thing that we're going to be beginning or initiating are new beginnings due to old endings, old closures. Again, we're in this kind of cycle, this period of the calendar where we have all of these retrograde planets forcing us to look back. The only way that we are moving forward is by going back to the past, the whole back to the future vibe. So this particular new moon in Virgo will be taking place at 9.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for some of us, depending on where it is that you're at in the world, it may be taking place on the 15th. Regardless, the majority of us having it on the 14th here, and it is a very interesting new moon in Virgo for a couple of reasons. First of all, Mercury rules over Virgo energy. We've been in Virgo season and Mercury has been retrograde the whole time. So this is a very weird instance, should I say, that we have the ruler of a whole season, let alone a moon event, in a retrograde for the whole season in its entirety. Having the ruler be retrograde means that there's a lot more inner reflection, there's a lot more looking back, there's a lot more reevaluating, rearranging, restructuring than there is actually building towards something new, something fresh, something, let's say, just a clean slate from scratch. So we have a lot going on under this new moon in Virgo. And let me just rewind you a bit because it all kind of began back under the full moon in Pisces. That was an absolute shit show doozy for many people, mostly because it was teaming up with Saturn, the Lord of Karma. And of course, that particular full moon in Pisces was working on the emotional and karmic level. And the Virgo energy that sits across from the Pisces energy that shares the healing axis focuses in on the physical body, the physical realm, the mental plane when it comes to healing. So we started this full moon in Pisces energy that was very heavy, very weighted, very karmic in nature. And it actually started the formation of the kite pattern that's currently taking place in the cosmos. If that's something that you're interested in, I have a whole episode on it over on my Patreon. We did an astro class about it. It's very karmic in nature. And as this new moon in Virgo reaches its peak energy, we're actually going to see the full completion of this kite. And the kite formation in its entirety is faded. It is a choice point. It is a crossroads. It is where we are essentially locking in what it is that we're going to be experiencing and building on for the next karmic chapter. So it's very divinely scripted in nature, let's say. Um, when we kind of go back to that full moon in Pisces and we understand the progression, the building, the development of our emotions, of our situation, of our circumstances, of our karma, of our soul contracts, we should be in a very logical, practical mindset in the here and now under this new moon in Virgo to see very carefully what needs to stay and what needs to go. Now, that may sound like very repetitive because we're often talking about having to sort out what is going to stay, what is going to go, especially when Venus was retrograde. She's now direct. She's still in her post retrograde shadow period. She is following her heart space. She is emerging as a brand new version of self, but the old self hasn't died off yet. The new self hasn't been anchored in yet. There's a lot of processing going on. That is what Virgo season is all about, especially Mercury in its place of power in Virgo energy, albeit retrograde, we're looking back. How did we get here? What decisions, what choices did we make? Would we make them again? What would we do differently? What are we keeping around in our lives? How can we improve it? How can we strengthen it? How can we make it better? What are we removing out of our lives? What does this mean for us? How does this free us up? How does this put us in a different situation to actually rearrange our physical realms, our to-do lists, our tasks, our chores, our mental health? How does this impact who it is that we now are, what it is that we want to do from here. 
So there's a lot of questioning. That's what goes on in Virgo energy. We have to use discernment. And of course, there's a lot of delusion because of the Piscean energy, because Neptune is retrograde in its place of power in Pisces. And of course, the Virgo and Pisces energy sits across from each other. So this is going to have a major impact on us really recognizing where we have to break out of old structures, old systems, old routines, old habits, where we have to do better because now we know better. We have to understand where we have to take control back in our mental plane, because what we focus on is what we create, what we bring into form, what we bring into matter here in this physical reality. The Virgo energy being ruled over by Mercury ruler of the mental plane, but an earth sign has the ability to focus on something in the mental plane and then see it be brought to life in the physical realm. So we have to be very careful with what it is that we're focused on. We have to rearrange our narratives. We have to rearrange our focus. We have to be asking the right questions. We can't be taking action and making moves out of fear. We can't really be kind of lost in la la land. This Virgo energy takes the dream, the vision, the goal that we are very kind of in la la land and imaginary land about and we start applying logic and practicality to it to see how it is that we could bring some of these aspects into form. Now, we're very focused on doing better, on feeling better, on being better. And we want to work smarter instead of harder. And we're very focused on adopting new methods, new ways of doing things, new ways of being better, whether that is a healthy diet, a healthy exercise routine, maybe just a better narrative, maybe it's speaking a little bit more kindly to yourself. Regardless, there's going to be a huge emphasis on what isn't working. We've been sitting in the funk of constantly being aware of what isn't working, and now it's time for us to start problem solving, fixing, healing, repairing the issues that we deem to be of worth and of value in order to stick around, but we may have to rearrange them. We have to restructure them. Now, I am going to encourage you to download the Moon Guide because, of course, that's where we do the shadow work. That's where we unpack the elemental energy and, of course, some of the tougher aspects that are taking place under this Moon influence because that is how we release. That is how we purge. We have to bring the unconscious, unaware type of energies, emotions, thoughts into our awareness, into our consciousness in order for us to actually be able to do something with them, to fix them, to repair them, to do whatever it is that needs to be done. Now, in that Moon Guide, you're going to realize that this is another earth dominant event which makes a lot of sense seeing as we are needing to focus on the physical realm as of late because we have to whittle away what our ego has created versus what our higher self wants to continue to pour into and therefore there are a lot of changes needed in our physical realm starting with the smaller details of our lives what we're focused on what it is that we're doing on autopilot what we have to bring more awareness to this is all very much part and parcel of the Virgo energy. So we're going to explore in the New Moon Guide the pros and cons of some of the aspects taking place under this moon influence. Now, this new moon is harmonizing with both Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy, and a loose opposition, if you will, to Neptune, who is retrograde in his place of power in the Pisces energy. Now, this is going to bring a, I'm going to say, a certain level of awareness out of the woodwork in order for us to face our fears, to recognize the blockages, to recognize the challenges, to recognize what part of our dream, our vision, our goal we're so inspired to actually work upon, to build upon, to bring to life. That Uranian energy has an epiphany an aha moment, a perspective, an understanding, new information, new details, new circumstances coming out of the woodwork, the wild card energies in order to force change upon us, especially in our physical realm. We're talking about Virgo energy and Earth energy. We're talking about Uranus being retrograde and Taurus energy, which is a fixed Earth sign, has us very focused on what it is that we've created in our physical realm, what it is that we're kind of stuck in a rut about and what it is that we need a spontaneous change to deviate away from what it is that we've been doing because we already know what we're going to get if we continue to do what it is that we've been doing.
And of course, many of us don't want that particular result anymore, which means that we have to try something different. And Uranus is here to kind of show us where we have to rebel against the old structures, where we have to be a little bit more independent to break away from the way that we've been doing things and try something different, try something new. So of course, the Virgo energy wants us to get our shit together wants us to create order where there's been chaos, wants us to get our to-do list in order. There's many, many lists in Virgo energy. There's lists upon lists, but the lists are no good if you're just making lists and putting them to the side and not actually working through the lists. It's kind of pointless. So we have to kind of get a little bit grounded, a little bit more logical and practical. We have to concentrate on the lists. We have to concentrate on creating a plan and a strategy. Now, granted, it's hard to think right now. Mercury, the ruler of this moon event, is retrograde. Good news about that, though. Not only 24 hours after the new moon in Virgo peaks, we will have Mercury go direct. But of course, he's going to be in his post-retrograde shadow period for the remainder of Virgo season, for the remainder of September. So it's going to be a very low and slow process to get our consciousness back, our awareness back, for us to get our mental plane functioning at the proper speed in which it's used to functioning. It's going to make it very hard for us to take a lot of action, make a lot of moves, see a lot of progress in a short amount of time. It's going to be very long, very drawn out. Baby steps do count, so remind yourself of that. But right now, we just need to put like tunnel vision on and focus on the things that are of highest priority. What needs to change now? What is the greatest weight? What is the greatest commitment, obligation, role, responsibility that's just sucking the life force energy out of us? These are the things that we have to tackle first and foremost. Now, the Virgo energy is very analytical. We're very, very in the mental plane. We're picking things apart. We're using discernment. We're asking the right questions. We're researching. We're exploring. We have a critical point of view helping us to really critique what needs to stay, what needs to go. So this is about really kind of first off divvying out who and what is staying and going. The things that are going, what can we do to strengthen them, to improve them, to do them better? I'm kind of repeating myself at this point in time, but again, it is very, very important that you understand we have to get organized. We have to put things in their place. We have to focus on the list of importance first and foremost, because otherwise it gets overwhelming. We tap into the Pisces energy. There's no boundaries. Everything's just wish-washy. It blends together. We don't know where to start. It really does kind of suffocate us under the weight of where do we start? So the Virgo energy helps us pinpoint where it is that we should start by identifying the greatest problem, the greatest issue. That is the problem. That is the issue that we need to fix, heal, repair, resolve, or clear off our to-do list, clear off of our plate altogether. So this is a good time to make a new, I'm going to say commitment to yourself. This isn't about committing to other people. This is about building upon the relationship with thyself. This is the year of seven. It is very important that we find ourselves, this newest version of ourselves, that we become so grounded and centered within this new version of self that we are not going to let anything outside of ourselves sway what it is that we know to be true, especially as we approach 2024, which is a major, major year, major transformation. We need to know who it is that we are, what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're working towards, what the plan is, what the strategy is. We need to figure it out. Now, that sounds like a lot. Sounds like a lot of pressure it can create a lot of anxiety. And of course, anxiety and perfectionism is top of the list when Virgo energy is concerned because we feel the need to fix everything now. All we need to do right now is address where it is that we aren't up to par, where we have to pour the time and energy in ourselves in order to get ourselves to a point of health and wellness where we feel strong and stable enough to start addressing some concerns outside of self. So this is, you know, this is using our mental plane to be as critical thinking as we could possibly be. This is about not being afraid of like, you know, rolling up your sleeves, getting your hands dirty to rearrange and restructure your physical realm, your physical life. This is 
contemplating the beginning of a new project. However, not taking action upon it because we're not really in the place to do that. This is about thinking, planning, strategizing. This is about making lists and actually ticking things off of those lists, not just pushing them to the side. This is about dressing some of the unhealthy habits, the unhealthy routines, the unhealthy narratives that are going on within us and flipping the script and kind of, you know, making everything a little bit more happier, more encouraging, more supportive. This is about really just kind of understanding that your success depends on how it is that you move through your day what you focus on, the daily habits of your day, what you're spending your time, energy, and attention doing on a daily basis is what is going to make or break you being successful in reaching your goal, reaching your dream, reaching your vision. So this is a point in time where, you know, sometimes we have to focus on the smaller little puzzle pieces in order to understand that the smaller pieces are needed in order to reveal the greater, grander picture. The first thing that you do when you open a puzzle is you flip all of the puzzle pieces upright and you kind of group the border pieces away from the inner pieces. That is the starting point. And then you can start seeing where there are like-minded pieces that snap together. And when a couple of those puzzle pieces snap together, they reveal what the greater, grander picture is going to be. That's exactly the kind of mind frame that we need to be in right now because many of us are basically sitting, waiting for signs, for validation on the path, on the direction that we should be taking when you are the creator, the designer, the producer, the starring role of your life. You get to choose where it is that you're going to go from here. You get to choose what it is that you are or are not going to continue to experience and tolerate. This is up to you. Stop waiting for signs and symbols to validate for you where major change is needed. You know where it's needed because that is what you spend your mental energy thinking about. The problems, what I can't do anymore, I can't take it anymore, I don't want to think about it anymore, I don't want to do this anymore. You already have the structure of the things that you need to let go of. Now you need to build something better in the place of the things that you're looking to remove. So it is time to kind of get real to get a little bit of a reality check going on here for us to be grounded, logical, practical in our approach to making plans on what needs to be cleaned up before we can go ahead and start building towards something new.